Are we up? Yep. Okay, so um, I have been working on uh, an accessory dwelling unit project in Newton. Um, so it's a single family home, uh, you know, existing single family home on a relatively large lot. Um, it's like a 1930s colonial, pretty typical for the Newton area. Um, they, uh, the, the clients um, want to have both sets of their parents move in, uh, you know, on a, on a full-time, pretty much on a full-time basis. Um, and with the single family zoning, they cannot add the square footage that they desired without a variance, but they can uh, take advantage of Newton's accessory dwelling unit policy. Um, so the project was kind of designed around that, um, but you can only add one kitchen um, as part of that. So there's kind of two separate suites, um, but uh, only one of them is a is considered the accessory dwelling unit. The other suite is just a kind of a guest suite um, that's considered an addition to the existing house. And um, I was brought in kind of after it was designed and permitted, um, and uh, we we ended up retweaking the um, the building envelope. Um, to kind of simplify things, uh, make it a little bit more cost effective, and um, also to accommodate some, some other features that they were after. Uh, one of the sets of parents has mobility issues, so um, we had to figure out how to get an elevator in there. So uh, we've done that. And um, it's basically um, a ground level garage, you know, garage at, at grade with two separate garage bays and a center um, circulation corridor with a staircase and the elevator um, and the suites on either side of that. Um, so let's, so what I wanted to talk about is, is mostly, um, I wasn't going to go through like all the nitty gritty of the project, but um, one of the interesting um, things that uh, the architect and I both were interested in doing is, um, you know, the, the main roofs, uh, it, it's two separate gable roofs, and um, I wanted to do, um, you know, do a foam-free roof, um, but the, the ceilings are cathedraled, um, and, uh, you know, wanted to do dense pack cellulose and uh, make it vapor open, um, and, you know, try and put some of that kind of uh, low embodied carbon um, uh, materials and assembly together. So someone help me out if there's, you know, th there's a, uh, a good name for this, this whole assembly, but um, that's kind of what I've been calling it. Vapor open, foam free, outsulated, vented roof assembly with cathedral ceilings. Um, so here, um, you know, the framers were just finishing up, uh, getting the roof framed. Um, there's a flat roof in the, the center um, circulation space. And you'll see in some of the other photos, the, the elevator shaft um, actually come, projects up higher than, than that flat section. Um, and then we have the, the two uh, gabled assemblies, which are, you know, pretty, pretty simple, uh, pretty simple roof to frame. Um, I elected to use uh, CDX ply for all of the roof sheathing, um, just uh, feeling like it's more um, durable than OSB and um, has a lot more um, kind of ability to absorb and disperse moisture um, if it gets in the assembly. Um, and so then we... Um, you know, we, we went back. So I had a framing crew do the whole frame and then myself and my team self-performed um, pretty much the entire envelope and um, exterior insulation and did all the air sealing and all the hard to do stuff. Um, we also did um, triple glazed UPVC uh, tilt turn windows and, and we uh, did all the prep and installation of those. 
Um, so we used uh, SEGA membranes. This is a mechanically attached um, vapor open roof membrane that they have um, similar to um, like Proclima's um, Mento. Um, and we use the accompanying tape. Um, we, the, the framers were, uh, were supposed to r raise the rafters up um, over, the, over the ridge um, an inch and a half. And uh, for a variety of reasons that didn't come to fruition, but um, we took a three quarter inch drill bit, put some ventilation holes you know, at, at an angle um, just to help uh, give, give a little bit more of a moisture path um, through to, uh, you know, what will become a, um, a ridge cap on the finished roof. Um, but so the whole entire roof got covered with this membrane, um, seams taped, um, taped into our, um, our zip system, which is our, our air barrier and WRB on the walls. Um, so that was all pretty meticulously detailed. Um, there it is just about complete. Um, and then we went about getting two layers of three inch Roxel um, mineral wool on the, on the roof, um, you know, staggered joints. And you can see um, some of the, the two by fours uh, battens going down on top of that. Um, so the, the, you know, we went, we went around screwing those, uh, those sheets of mineral wool off with um, six and a half inch screws just into the sheathing um, with, with those plastic washers. Um, and then the, the two by four battens are, are screwed down into the rafters um, with like, 12 inch um, fasten master, like three eighths lag screws. Um, so, you know, this is, this is my first time doing this kind of um, outsolation project. So there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve. Um, you know, we had some things working in our favor, which was, um, you know, it was a pretty simple roof layout. Just everything was 16 on center. Um, you know, there's no like uh, real changes in the framing details. So um, we just had to keep track of, of those rafter locations as we applied the various layers um, and kind of snap some control lines and, and just kept, you know, every time we slapped a new layer on just transferring those marks so we didn't lose them. Um, and it, inevitably when you're driving those 12 inch screws through those battens, you know, it, it <laughs> it, it takes quite a bit to get the hang of keeping them perfectly straight um, all the way through the rafter. Um, so one of the, one of the learning uh, things for me is even though it would have cost more money um, doing those roof rafters and TJIs where you have a wider cord um, really uh, would make the installation um, of, of this system a lot easier. So I would probably advocate for doing that uh, in the future. Um, so yeah, we, um, we also have uh, solar arrays going on uh, on these roofs. So, um, you know, two of the slopes are Southwestern facing and have really good exposure. Um, so we made sure not to put any of our um, plumbing penetrations or anything through those sides of the roof. Um, so, you know, it can just be all solar. Um, but uh, we have a, um, a six inch um, kitchen hood exhaust duct right here and um, a three inch um, plumbing vent. Um, and and those, are, those all have to get, um, you know, taped into our, our SEGA membrane for air barrier continuity. Um, so, you know, just bringing in the, the plumber, we did the sheet metal um, just kind of stub through the roof ourselves, um, but uh, we brought the plumber in for a day um, 
even at this early stage of the game to uh, lay out his, his, um, his waist and vent lines um, so that we knew we were putting it in a good spot for him. Um, so then you can see, you know, all the two by four battens going down. And then we used uh, two by tens at the perimeter to, uh, you know, get out over, um, get out over the exterior insulation that's going on the walls um, and kind of come out to be uh, co-planar with, um, with our, uh, our exterior insulation. Um, our exterior wall assembly. So uh, there's a couple shots. One's a, a drone shot of the, the, the insulation there, mostly prepped. Um, on the flat roofs, we did, um, we did poly ISO, um, un, unfaced or un, with, not with, you know, with paper facing, not, not foil faced. Um, and so we set, uh, I think the, the minimum was five inches and then they used, um, you know, the tapered sheets to uh, create pitch in the directions that we wanted it. Um, so um, the, the two by fours, you know, hold everything down, um, but they also give us a, a ventilation cavity as and um, and then we, we use this, uh, we use the half inch zip system just for a nail base for our our final roofing. Um, so it's just, it's just a big sandwich, really. Um, a lot of layers to get up there. Uh, and then of course, uh, <laughs> you know, one of the other things with, uh, with, with building this way is just, um, it, it's not, it's not as fast, uh, as, as just, you know, doing a, a spray foam roof where you just you just sheet the deck and and get that roof on right away um you know you you end up being more exposed to the elements and um you know once we get to a certain time of year it's like we're you know snowstorm is fair game so um fortunately this is the only time i had to to clear off the roof but we were we were already you know pretty much uh, pretty much there with the assembly. Um, but, you know, especially, um, leaving, holding that sheathing back for our ridge cap and stuff there, there was still opportunities for water and, and snow and everything to get in. And one of the, uh, kind of downsides of the, the SEGA membrane, that's our, our primary air barrier is that it's, it's so vapor open that, um, it is, you know, it's water resistant, it is not waterproof. So, um, you know, it wasn't until we, we got through all those layers and, um, you know, all the insulation and got the TPO roof and our asphalt roof on that, that it was really, uh, really truly watertight. Um, so, you know, trickier sequencing. Um, so, so here's some interior shots. Um, as the framers framed uh, interior partitions, um, you know, I had the the Sega Myrex on hand, and we just tacked up strips of it on the top plates, um, so so we could just uh, tie into it later. Um, and so we we went around and um, laid that out on the the underside of the roof rafters, um, and. Um, you could see some some rough mechanical already going in there, and um, and some of our our windows here. Um, they were really kind of the structural was really crazy in the the gable end walls that have um, have these triangle windows. Um, so that was that was fun. Uh, I, the the whole the structural of this project is a whole other conversation because for the the square footage and the size of the project, the, the structural is pretty complicated. Um, so, you know, laid out the, the, the Myrex, uh, taped everything. Um, we used some, um, uh, some of the Proclima, um, I'm, I'm 
spacing on the the name of it, but the uh, their air sealing um, adhesive caulk. Um, we use that to uh, behind the the Myrex to seal it to the the top plates um, around the perimeter, and then um, our insulation contractor when when they when they come to do uh, the dense pack cellulose they'll they'll install retention netting on the walls first, uh, pack the cellulose, and then go back and install the 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 Sega Myrex over it and and detail that in and and tape it to the um, to the sheets we have on the roof already. And we installed um, two by threes um, to give us a service cavity. So all of our all of our electrical and everything is um, at least in the, the roof is all run outboard of the of the Myrex. And um, you know we're just using LED um, like puck uh, puck style lighting um, and the inch and a half uh, gives you clearance for, for the transformers and, and all of that wiring. So, um, we don't have to worry about air sealing any of those things. Um, I did use, uh, a little bit of spray foam in some areas on this project, uh, that, um, that were tricky. There's a bunch of steel and, um, I sprayed both sides of the steel, um, before, uh, before it got closed up, um, as well as some some other areas that were just um, going to be hard to insulate, um, or I, we just wanted more R value. Um, so that that's kind of uh, that's kind of like the the end of of uh, the the critical components of of this roof assembly. Um, you know the the Myrex membranes critical to um, keep any keep moisture from the uh, from the interior space out of the roof assembly, and then you know uh, if any moisture does find its way into that assembly, um, promote um, drying to the inside, and then the the membrane on the roof is um, is promoting uh, outward drying. Um, and our, our ventilation cavity is, um, is helping out with that. So, you know, the, the goal is to have enough insulation on top of the roof so that um, our sheathing, our roof sheathing is warm, um, but also um, build in such a way so that, you know, if, if any moisture does get in the assembly or, or accumulate that it's able to dry, dry back out. Um, so we don't have risk of, of mold or anything like that. So this is some other um, outside stuff. Um, honestly, after, um, I, after using uh, kind of seesawing between zip and um, self, some, some different self-adhered WRBs, I think I'm, I'm all done with, with uh, the, the zip. It's not necessarily a knock on the product. It's more, um, it, it, it more has to do with, you know, how, um, how subs typically install it or treat it. Um, but so we have this, we have these two cantilevered areas. Um, so this is part, part of where the steel is. Um, and, you know, we have living space above this. So I use zip R sheathing um, on the underside of the floor system. So it's, um, two inches of, of poly ISO with the, uh, with the sheathing, uh, with the sheathing on it. Um, so that gives us a thermal break and our, our air barrier for that floor system. Um, I use some zip liquid flash on, on overdriven nails and, uh, went around and sealed the, um, the wall sheathing to the, to the foundation, um, around the full perimeter with the, the zip liquid flash. And um, in, in installing our windows, um, I, I elected to um, install all the windows in plane with the, with the wall sheathing. Um, and they're flangeless, um, you know, European style windows. And um, I used a, um, another Sega tape there um, I believe it's the, the Fen trim tape. Um, and uh, that stuff is pretty cool. Um, 
and it's it's also vapor open. We did a full uh, a full perimeter tape around the windows, um, which really um, you know it, it gives a really good air seal. Um, it's really easy to do, so that went really fast. Um, I think if if I if we didn't have all these tricky uh, triangular windows on this project, I would have preferred to um, use a three quarter plywood buck um, for our, our trim detail around the full perimeter. Um, but it just uh, it just wasn't really uh, practical at the time uh, to make that happen for those those triangular windows for us. Um, so um, we we ended up kind of making a, a buck of sorts uh, that that got screwed back into the um, into the framing um, and then gave us uh, gave us something to screw to for our exterior extension jams and then we filled uh, you know where we we didn't have shims we we filled the cavity with uh, with um, mineral wool insulation and then um, installed uh, a three inch layer of uh, mineral wool um, on the walls. So we've got um, three inches on the walls and six inches on the roof. And then we have uh, two by six, um, two by six framing, which will get dense pack. Um, so it's, um, it's well above code. It's not, um, it's not getting close to uh, passive house territory of, of levels of insulation. Um, but, um, you know, we, we were really, really diligent about, um, our, our taping and our detailing. Um, so, um, I haven't gotten any blower door, um, I haven't gotten to test, uh, the blower door yet on this, um, but we, we will be, um, probably not until post insulation, but, um, but we will be to kind of uh, get a read on on how we did, and um, at that point, we we still should be able to uh, address um, if we have if we have some areas that that need some improvement. Um, and I threw this photo on there just to show you know what we did for you know there's going to be a dining area underneath this, an outdoor dining area under this uh, cantilever, and. You know, so there's recessed lighting called out, and again, in order to uh, avoid needing to air seal cans or you know do anything crazy, um, we just uh, furred this down um, with two by stock, um, laid out those LEDs again. Uh, the wiring for those pokes through uh, the wall, and it's just one wire. That's all we had to air seal for for all these lights. Um, so you know, really just trying to minimize uh, the, any potential um, air leaks on the project and, and, and simplify um, the air sealing wherever we could. Um, and then these are just some shots of kind of the, um, the, the rest of the wall assembly before, um, before cladding went on. So we have a couple of different cladding schemes on on this, um, but the the two gable volumes are get um, are getting uh, vertical open joint cedar. Um, so that's why the two layers of strapping, so that um, we could install the vertical boards, um, and used a, a mix of uh, core vent and um, and just. Um, metal screen, metal bug screen, um, stapled to the, uh, to the strapping to keep the critters out. Um, and since we only did one layer of insulation on the walls, you know, inevitably you end up with, um, with some joints that aren't quite as tight as you want to get them. So we did go around with a little canned foam and, and, um, and fill any joints that were more than like an eighth of an inch or something. Um, just to try and uh, minimize any thermal bridging there. Um, I think I think that's the end of the slides that I have. Um, happy to kind of scroll back through and, and answer any questions that that people might have.
Is all the um, is all the insulation on the roof assembly exterior, or did you pack the cavities? Yeah, the cavity, the ca the it's a two by ten uh, roof rafter, and that's getting uh, dense packed with it cellulose. Is. Yeah, so it's it's the six inches outside plus the you know nine and a quarter inches of cellulose on the inside. What do you do for insect uh, keeping insects coming coming up the the walls with all that open all those open spaces? Yeah, so we um, at the at the bottom of the you know uh, at the bottom of the wall um, we tacked up um, a, a fold of uh, of metal bug screen, you know, just like you can get a roll of you know screen material for doors or whatever, and um, you know that that tucks against our insulation and beneath and over the the outside face of the the two layers of strapping, um, and then we also use um, core vent, which is just a, a corrugated uh, PVC strip. Um, and uh, you know that's installed. Um, do you, that's do you installed any, you know, on the the. You have any experience the, with with whether bugs nest in this in the mineral wool, or does anybody? I was just curious, but I, I've seen them nesting in the poly isenerate. But how about mineral wool? Do you know? I have mineral wool on my own house, um, and uh, I, there's no bugs. They, they don't like, they, uh, the stone wool seems to be not favored. Um, I've had foam just chewed up, but. Um, good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, um, and uh, you can't see it. You can't see it on these photos, but um, the, uh, this is covered with, um, with tar paper. So, uh, you know, since we did an open joint, um, you know, an open joint cladding, um, all of this got covered with tar paper. So while, while it is open joint, um, you know, it's not like, it's not like bugs can go in between the joints of the siding and get right into this. So it, it is kind of a, a closed cavity, but the tar paper, you know, can get soaking wet and dry back out and, um, and so that kind of uh, protects that that whole thing from um, from anything getting in. Wolf. Uh, what did you think of the the windows? You said they were logic. Yeah, they were logic. Um, it was our first time using um, UPVC windows. You know, again the. Um, the big ones are really freaking heavy. Um, so uh, we invested in some good suction cups and, um, you know, all hands on deck to move them around. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. It, it's totally worth on, on the operable units. It's totally worth pulling the glazing out, uh, you know, or the operable panels out so that you can set them. Um, and all in all, they're great. I mean, uh, the only, you know, the only downside I see is that, you know, you, you've got a lot of frame material, um, yeah. but uh, I think they look great and they operate really well and, um, and they, they seal like a submarine. So um, the, the cost of these, um, it was, I, I priced out this project in, in these windows as well as uh, Marvin Elevate. And um, these were actually the same price. Elevate with uh, triple glaze or? No, with double glaze. Wow. Yeah. Um, obviously these are, these are just straight up UPVC. If we had done um, a color film, um, th that would have raised the cost of the whole package by a few grand. Um, so that was kind of the trade off is that um, you know, we, we, we passed on the, on, you know, going with, uh, a, a color film uh, yeah. to save a few bucks on the package and, and keep it, you know, keep it competitive. 
But yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, the the triple glazed UPVC windows are just really, really cost effective. Um, you know, for for their performance, it's like I'm not sure you can beat them. Um, and it's nice being able to install all the windows from the interior. Yep. Um, you know, there 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 wasn't any any space on this build that was too high, but um, for the multifamily project that we're working on, you know, you'll be three and a half stories up installing a bunch of big heavy windows, and um, you get to install them totally from the inside, and then all you're doing on the outside is taping them. Any other questions here for, for Milo? The excellent project. Thank you for sharing that one. Yeah, it was awesome. 